All right, so we're good to go. So good evening again, guys. Uh, my name is Samuel Neal, uh, president and founder of the Aviation Club of Jamaica. And I'm joined by Mrs. Stacy Reeder from the Florida Institute of Technology. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Um, good evening, all. Today, we're going to be um, talking about the Florida Institute of Technology, um, which Mrs. Stacy Reader will give us a presentation, um, answer all your questions. And we also have a few club members who are at Florida Tech now who will be um, open to answer any questions that you guys may have as well. So I want to welcome Stacy, um, Gregory, Kimon, um, uh, also okay. Chad, and uh, everybody else who is here from Florida Tech uh, to be with us to you know facilitate all the questions that persons may have about this prestige university. So welcome, Stacy. It's Thank good you. to have you here with us again. Um, the first time we're having this type of thing because of this whole pandemic of course but um you know it's good to still be here good to still see you i can see that you're doing well as am i so you know thank you for making the time as well um on a weekend to to present to us all right well thank you samuel um and i wanted to particularly thank chad and greg and Kaiman for joining me and all of the Jamaica Flight Club members. Here you are on a Saturday evening. I don't know many young people who would be devoting their Saturday evening to this. So, you know, I'm older. For me, staying in on a Saturday night is normal, but for all of you, I'm sure it's not. So I just wanted to thank you for spending your evening with me, Chad, Greg, and Kaiman, thank you so much. You young adults have plenty more to do. So just know that I'm very grateful to all of you. And I'm very impressed that all these young people are in on a Saturday night. Um, I know that it's coronavirus and you might tell me you have to be in anyway, but you could be doing a lot of other things. So thank you very, very much. So what we're gonna do tonight is um, go through a little bit of information about Florida Tech and then open the session up for questions and answers. Um, I'm particularly pleased that Greg and Chad and Kimon are with us because while I do work at Florida Tech, I think getting the perspective of young people who are closer to your age, who used to be exactly where you are there in Kingston in high school, and who have then made the choice and made the sacrifice to come to Florida Tech, I think that you're going to be able to get a lot of perspective from them. And, um, and I hope that you get a lot of um, help with figuring out how to make it happen if this is what you really want to do. Um, Samuel and I have known each other, gosh, Samuel, how many years now? Close to 10? Uh, it's a little bit over 10, yeah. Yeah, because I've been at, I'm just wrapping up my 10th year at Florida Tech, and I think you and I met my first or second year at Florida Tech. I believe so, yes. Yeah, you came to campus, I remember, <laughs> yeah. So Samuel is very, very generous and always has me come visit. And we, he and I get together when I'm in Jamaica. And usually I get together with the Jamaica Flight Club. So um, always a pleasure. Some of your names, Catherine and um, Kimon, your name was right familiar. And Mr. O'Neill, your name was very familiar. I think we've been together many years now. So let's get into Florida Tech a little bit. Hold on, let's make sure the slides are gonna advance. Can, there we go. So Florida Tech, I know most of you have been to Florida before, so you know where Florida is. Florida Tech is in a city called Melbourne. Um, this is what's called Florida's Space Coast. It's the home of the United States Space Program. We have a lot of space companies here in, in Melbourne, um, not only NASA, which as you know is a government uh, entity, but we also have private space companies now. So where it used to be very difficult for international students to work for NASA, now that we have some private companies here in town, it's not as difficult as it used to be. And in addition to space companies, this is the aerospace headquarters of the United States too. Uh, Melbourne, believe it or not, for a small city is the nation's fourth largest high-tech workforce. The main industries in town are space, aerospace and IT. So there's a lot of high tech jobs in the area. And by the area, I'm referring to Melbourne up to Cape Canaveral, then west to Orlando. 
if you connect those three cities, um, they, they create an isosceles triangle. And within that triangle is the nation's fourth largest high-tech workforce. So Melbourne is right on the coast. We're right on the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. And um, you're, when you're on campus, you are 10 minutes at the most away from some of the world's most beautiful beaches. And you're one hour from the big city of Orlando, which you've heard of, that's where all the theme parks are. And you are three hours from the large metropolises of Miami and Tampa. The university is made of four colleges. The College of Aeronautics is the one that you are most interested in, and that's the one we're going to spend a little bit of time on. And then we have the College of Business, the College of Engineering and Science, and the College of Psychology and Liberal Arts. Um, the College in Engineer, of Engineering and Science is our largest college. Uh, about 60% yeah. of the students okay. at Florida Tech are enrolled in the College of Engineering and Science. Um, and I know some of you are interested also in majors in business and in engineering, um, but most of you are interested in the College of Aeronautics, so that is where we're gonna focus. So these are the bachelor degrees that are offered in the College of Aeronautics. Um, we also have some associate degrees. You can get an AA degree, which is an associate of arts in flight operations and dispatch, the air traffic control is not a separate degree. That is a certificate that you can earn in either a BS degree or an AS degree or an AA degree. For those of you unfamiliar with those terms, um, an, a, a BS stands for Bachelor of Science and AS stands for Associate of Science and an AA is an Associate of Arts degree. Um, with all of these areas, you can also do a flight option. That A flight option means that you also take flight lessons because you wanna become a pilot. You can do anything from a personal pilot's license and all the different licenses between that and the commercial pilot's license. We have all of that. We also have type ratings and we have two different kinds of licensing. We have FAA as well as EASA. And if you've never heard of EASA, that is the European equivalent of the FAA. Um, the flight option does add an extra cost to your degree program. It's about $20,000 extra a year to take the flight option. For most students, that flight option, if they've had no flight hours whatsoever, um, to go from zero flight hours to the commercial pilot's license, it takes most students two years. If you have already started your flight training there in Jamaica, that will um, shorten the time that you will be flying with FIT Aviation. You don't have to do the flight option. If you have, are not interested in becoming a pilot, you can do one of the degree programs without the flight option. You can also get out of the College of Aeronautics if you wanna become an engineer, you wanna become a psychologist, um, you want to major in business, you can do another major and still do the flight option. That's still okay. Oh, and by the way, if we go back to those two, uh, four colleges, I want you to know that the College of Aeronautics and the College of Psychology are the two colleges that enjoy 100% placement annually. So that's really a great thing. The kids who come out of those two colleges um, are employed or in graduate school within six months of graduation. That's really incredible that it's 100% placement. All right. Um, this is on campus. It's Skirla Hall. And this is where the majority of your College of Aeronautics classes are going to be. Um, in this building, you have both lecture halls as well as classrooms. Um, Greg, Spencer, and Kimon, are there are there any break rooms in that in the Skirla Hall for you all to hang out in as students? There's one on the first floor. Okay, okay. Um, and there's also what's really cool when you walk into the bottom floor. There, they are some of the very first simulators that Florida Tech had, and I believe they are student built, and they're from many many years ago. And I always find that very interesting. There's also a bulletin board on the first floor where there's a lot of job postings. So if you're looking for internships or jobs, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 
frequently there are notices on that bulletin board. I don't know if this is true because I've never flown over the building, but rumor has it that from the air, Skirla Hall looks like the stealth bomber. Greg, Chad, and Kimon, you all fly regularly. Have you flown over that building and is that true? It actually is true. Okay. Again, I've never flown over it, so I knew it was a rumor, but I'm glad to hear it's true. <laughs> this is the Center of Aeronautics and Aviation that's out at the Melbourne Airport. Florida Tech owns this building and about 35 airplanes that are on the back side of the Melbourne Airport. The Melbourne International Airport is about 10 minutes from campus, and you don't have to worry about transportation. Florida Tech has a shuttle and it constantly goes from the main campus to the um, Center for Aeronautics and Innovation. And it, it goes from about six or seven o'clock a.m. to about six or seven o'clock p.m. Um, Monday through Friday for sure. And then I'm not sure what the hours are on Saturday and Sunday, but I do know the shuttle also goes on Saturday and Sunday. And it's absolutely free for College of Aeronautics students to take that shuttle out to the airport. And actually, hold on, I got my buildings mixed up. This is halfway between campus and the airport. And a lot of research goes on here. And the Buzz Aldrin Space Institute is also located in this building. Yes, Buzz Aldrin is a visiting professor at Florida Tech and a lecturer. This is the facility out at the airport and our planes are behind it. And there's also simulators here, as well as in this building. So these are some of the um, attributes that are in these two buildings and out at the flight facility at the airport. You see we've got simulators, we've got aircraft, and you can see the four kinds of aircraft that we have. The aviation academic courses or ground school are taught by the College of Aeronautics. The actual flight lessons are taught by FIT Aviation. Um, those are two separate companies under one corporate umbrella. And you can tell I tend not to read slides to you because I know all of you can read and that makes a presentation boring if I read the slides to you. So now that we've focused on the College of Aeronautics, let's go back and learn a little bit about the university. I think um, one thing you will find about Florida Tech is it's a very hands-on education. A lot of universities involve a lot of reading, a lot of lectures, a lot of listening at Florida Tech. The um, teaching philosophy is learning by doing. And if you think about it, when we went over those four colleges, a lot of our degrees are in the STEM fields. And a lot of students in STEM fields like to learn by doing, they're very hands-on students. And so our professors really believe that students learn best that way. You're gonna be involved in research. You're gonna be involved in individual projects. You're gonna be involved in group projects. Your learning is gonna be designed to focus on the higher level thinking skills. So rather than reading, memorizing and listening, you're gonna do a lot of synthesizing. In other words, taking small blocks of learning and putting them together to, to make a bigger whole. You're gonna do a lot of an analyzing or analysis in which you take a big whole and you break it down into its smaller parts. And then the highest level of thinking of course is evaluation. You're gonna be doing a lot of evaluation, taking what you learn in the classroom, in the cockpit, in the simulators, and then um, deciding what works, what is the best way to do something? Um, what are some ways you can improve that? What are some things you could do uh, in research that would enhance that particular product or that particular process? So very, very, very interactive, immersive learning goes on. And in this picture, um, this is the Harris Student Design Center, and it's a big cavernous warehouse kind of a building that is totally dedicated to student projects. Um, it looks small, but it's actually three stories high. And these are, I don't have a pointer, but these are storage um, shelves where we have a crane that can actually lift projects onto these shelves for storage. <clears throat> There's a big bay door where students can get the big projects in and out, like if they're building a car like this, or a hovercraft, or a boat. And there's also tool stations that are mobile, um, where students have all the tools that they need to build these things. Next to this building is also a workshop. 
Um, and students are taught how to use all of the power tools and you're checked out on those so that you know how to use them to work on these projects. This is a typical glass cockpit. And I will let the boys explain what that is because I do not know the specifics to that. I do not know how to fly airplanes. My brother does, but I do not. All right, this is the lobby out at the airport of our building out there at the Bueller Center. And um, I think it's important that you know that Florida Tech is a very diverse population. And you can see the Jamaica flag hanging there. One third of our student body is from Florida. And most of you who have been to Florida, you know what a big state it is. One third of our student body are from the other 49 states. And one third of our student body is from overseas. And our students come from over 100 different countries. Um, why I like to say that where our students are from is for you to know that most of our students come from far away. So the campus is extremely friendly. When you leave home for the first time to become completely independent, it's a little bit scary, causes some anxiety. But when you arrive on campus, I think you are welcomed very warmly. And Greg and Kimon and Spencer will be able to talk about this. But from what I observe, because everybody comes from far away, even the ones from the United States are coming from far away. I think people want to make a sense of community and want to create a second home quickly. So I find that the students are, and faculty and staff are very welcoming. All right, let's talk about the application process. Number one, it's free to apply. You can go online to our website and click on the apply button or you can do the US common application. A lot of students will ask me which is the better application to complete. One is not better than the other. Let me tell you how I would go about, <coughs> excuse me, um, choosing which application to do. If you're going to apply to a handful of, of schools in the United States and they are all on the US common application, that is the better application for you to do. It will save you time. But do be aware that if you do the US common application, it does require a college counselor at your school to get involved. Many of your high schools have college counselors, but some of them do not. If your school does not have a college counselor, you don't want to do the college, um, the common application. Florida Tech's application is shorter and easier. So you might want to do that. Either way, it's free. In addition to doing the application, you need to send us your high school transcripts. We make the admission decision all over the Caribbean region based on your CSECs, your Caribbean Examination Council exams. CAPE is used for transfer credit. And I know in Jamaica, not all of you do CAPEs. Some of you go on and do UE. Um, which is absolutely fine. You must do at least five core CXE or CSEC exams, at least, please do more. You must do at least math. You must do science for sure. I'd like to see some history, some literature and writing. Uh, I know a lot of you do Caribbean history, but make sure that there are true academic classes, at least five of them. When you finish your CSEX, you are not old enough to go away to university yet. In the Caribbean, you're only 16 years old. So I suggest you either do your CAPE or you go on to UE and do your AA degree so that when you come to university, you're at least 17, most of you 18. <coughs> the letter LOR stands for letters of recommendation. That is optional. I strongly recommend that you have a letter of recommendation. It should be from a teacher. Samuel, who's the president and founder of your club, will also do a little letter on Jamaica club head, excuse me, Jamaica um, flight club letterhead, because um, that will enable you to have a guaranteed $10,000 scholarship. We strongly recommend an essay. It is not required, but I strongly recommend it. Um, for your topic, what I would like to do, I'd like you to approach it as a personal statement. 
tell me something unique about you. I can look at your CSEC scores and how you've performed in CAPE or at UE, but I want to get a hint as to what your personality is all about because I want to make sure that when you get to my campus, you're going to be happy. It's really important that in addition to doing well academically, that you thrive personally. Because if you're not happy and you're not thriving, you're not going to do well academically. So when I read your essay, I'm looking at your personality to determine if I think you will fit in well at Florida Tech. And if I feel that you will make that transition from childhood, living with mom and dad, to four years later, becoming an adult and leaving and going anywhere in the world and being able to provide for yourself. In order to have that personal growth, you need to be in an environment where you feel very safe, where you feel very comfortable and you feel very happy. So that's what I'm looking for in that essay. SAT and ACT. There's a lot of questions about that, particularly with the coronavirus because the tests are so difficult to take with the coronavirus. The good news is, is that Florida Tech does not require international students to take the SAT or the ACT. So if you're worried about that and Florida Tech is where you wanna to go to university, I can tell you right now, don't even worry about it. If you're a dual citizen, both a Jamaican citizen and a US citizen, or you're simply a US citizen, then the um, SAT or ACT right now are still required for you. But if you're truly a Jamaican citizen, don't worry about it at all. Proof of English proficiency in Jamaica, English is the national language. So you don't need to worry about that. For all of you, English was your first language. So you don't have to worry about that at all. Okay, these are just some of the few of over a hundred employers who hire Florida Tech students. <coughs> Excuse me, I am not sick, I promise. I've been talking all day, so my throat is dry. Um, you can see a lot of airline companies are on here, um, but we have, these are all large multinational companies that you've heard of, but we also have medium-sized companies, and then we have small startups that are in the area that also hire our students. Quite honestly, as an international student, I think you have a better chance of getting hired and staying in the United States to work if you're with a large multinational company, simply because they have the infrastructure and the legal departments to help with the immigration portion. When you're with a small startup, a lot of times they don't have the infrastructure to deal with the immigration portion of being an international student, but there are options at, at all different sized companies. And I'm sure that these names of these companies in this screen are all very familiar to all of you. All right, questions. Um, you're welcome to unmute your mics and ask questions. Uh, there's also the chat box and I'm happy to monitor that. Let's see if I can have access to the chat. Or Sam, maybe Samuel, maybe you want to monitor the chat box. I'm not the host, so I can't monitor that. That might be something you need to do. And if you want to follow us on social media, here's our handles. And then um, in the red portion of this slide, you've got the contact information for the admissions office. If you have questions after tonight, feel free to email me or call me and I am happy to answer any questions. So what questions do we have? Greg, Kimon and Chad, you wanna unmute so you can answer some questions too? I'm sure. ready to. Okay. Anyone have a question? Yes, I have a question. Okay. Hi, um, good evening, I'm Romario. Um, I... Just a quick question. Um, what if you already have, because you mentioned earlier that um, we could do the um, bachelor's in aviation mm -hmm. um, and we can do get our flight hours along with it. Right. Flight training along with it. What if we already have a, a commercial pilot's license, FAA commercial pilot's license? If you already have your commercial pilot's license. Yes. Then you really just need to get a degree, right? Yes. So if you just want to get a degree, your price just dropped by $20,000. Okay. Isn't so that good news? So um, what do you want to get a degree in, if you don't mind me asking? Well, um, 
I was thinking of aviation management or aeronautical science. Okay. Do you like physics and math? Yes, I do. Then aeronautical science would be a good choice for you. Do you like business? Uh, not really. Then aviation management is probably not where you want to go. Aviation management is the business side of the aviation industry. So anything from uh, finance to marketing to insurance to uh, personnel to HR to um, airport development, airport management, airline development, safety, all of the business side of being on the aviation industry. If you're more into the science of aviation, then aeronautical science would be a better choice for you. Greg and Chad. If I'm not mistaken, your majors are aeronautical science with flight, correct? Correct. Yes. Kimon, what about you? Same thing. All right. I'm going to let the three of them tell you a little bit about their major and what they see themselves doing professionally with their major. And then shortly after, we will uh, jump into some questions that are in the chat. Okay. So as, as Stacey said, my major is aeronautical science with flight. So my major is related to the science behind flight. So the physics behind flight. So this semester I'm actually taking a course called aerodynamics and it's the physics. It's pretty hard for me. I enjoy physics. I enjoy the sciences. So I enjoy that stuff. I would not do aviation management because I don't like it. I don't like it. Oh, we're don't. getting some feedback on a mic. I don't know who it is. I don't like the business stuff, so I didn't pick that. So I chose aeronautical science. It's what I enjoy. Spencer, right. what about you? All right, so I actually did both aeronautical science and aviation management. And the reason why I had time to do that and flight was because of my cape. So I got to transfer like the crates. Mm -hmm. So I had more time to mm -hmm. fill that. Up. And the reason I did both is to give myself more options because as it relates to career-wise, aviation is large. Um, I graduated last December, and now I'm a flight instructor for FIT. But while applying for FIT to flight instructor, I also applied to Avadine, which is a, co a huge company that makes um, avionics for their aircrafts. And that was a business on a business perspective. So it was like sales and sales and representing accounts. So that's where my aviation management came into effect too. I don't to even get that interview. So it's not, aviation management is a little harder, per, personally saying, but it gives you opportunity. Um, uh, Kimon, what about you? For me, I did aeronautical science, kind of the same thing like Gregory. I prefer the more sciencey side of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, from back in high school, I wasn't good at accounting, so I know business wasn't my thing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Along with that, um, I know the OPT for a, uh, aeronautical science is longer. It's three years versus aviation management is one year. So that gives me a longer time to sort out myself after I graduate. So okay. that was the better choice for me personally. Okay, um, let me ask the three of you this. From what I understand in talking to alumni, talking to faculty, talking to students, is is it safe to assume there might be more job opportunity in the scope of your entire career in aviation management than in aeronautical science? Or would you say they're about even? I would say it's safe to say so. With safe to say what? You didn't answer like Aviation question. management gives you more options. That's what, I, that's what I understand. But since I'm not in the industry, I didn't know if that was fact. So with aeronautical science, it's harder to find jobs outside the scope of flying, mm -hmm. which as we know, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. I know we all want to be pilots and stuff, but right. we can lose our we can lose our license for something stupid or we can even lose our, our medical certificate. So I think aviation management gives you a I would say better mm -hmm. can be to fall back on because you can get into a lot of stuff such as finance that we spoke about you can get into general management. I was also looking at a, there was a Delta internship this summer and it was on a, on a business side of, of stuff. So I think it gives you more options. And it also extended the 
the STEM, it, they also recently turned it into a STEM degree. So you'll get two years OT, OPT also. Okay, and we're, I'm going to talk about OPT and CPT in just a minute because I know those terms may not be familiar to students who are still in high school. Um, one thing I did want to mention is that um, the young man who said he's already earned his CPL, one thing, let me ask you this, how many flight hours have you accumulated so far? <laughs> 